Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old captain coming to you live from Crooked Creek. This week's hymn of the week. Um, a lot of people wonder, is he sitting on a canoe for real? Or has he just got some kind of a backdrop? You know, is he really on the creek? Well, I, I can tell you this morning that I'm, I'm really on the creek. So... Maybe that'll give me a little more credibility, I hope, anyway. But our lesson today is from Acts 9, and it concerns Paul's dramatic conversion on the road to Damascus. Many people have heard about that, even if you're not a Christ follower, even if you're not a, a, a believer, um, you have probably heard of having a Damascus road experience. Well, all that's in Acts chapter 9, and I want to encourage you to read it. But um, Saul of Tarsus is who we're talking about. And um, he was a Pharisee. He was a very learned man. He was educated beyond measure, set at the feet of Gamaliel. He, um, he knew all the law. He knew when to pray. He knew what to say and when to do it. And... Um, and he was passionate about what he was doing. He did not believe that Christ had risen from the dead. He did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He, he just couldn't get over the fact that these people were worshiping a dead man. How can that be? Well, he got permission from the priest in Jerusalem, and he got paperwork like... Um, like an affidavit or like a, a search warrant or a subpoena to go round up anyone who was uh, a believer in Jesus. Any, they called them people of the way. We, uh, weren't called Christians at the time. Um, they were called people of the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So Christ's followers were called people of the way. And Saul was in hot pursuit. He was going after these people, and he had backup and paperwork that said he could bind them and bring them back to Jerusalem. And, and he wasn't playing. I mean, he went as far as he wanted to go on this mission because he felt like his way was the best way. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He didn't believe that he had died for people's sins and risen on the on three days after dying on the cross. He didn't believe in the resurrection. And and he just couldn't he couldn't buy into it. So he was going to eliminate it. And so um, he and his entourage are on the way to Damascus and folks that's 120 miles up the road. So they were going a long way to eliminate these people who were contrary to what he believed. Well, God could have met with him anywhere along that road. He could have started at point A, point C, point G, but he waited till right before he was in Damascus and a bright light shone down on Saul unlike anything he had ever seen. It blinded him and he hit the deck. He hit the ground. And a voice came to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who, who is this? Who, who are you? And Jesus said, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting. Well, had Saul technically persecuted Jesus himself? No, but he had persecuted his followers, and he was in the midst of persecuting his followers. That encourages me because it tells me that Jesus is saying, you mess with Horace, you mess with me, because he's one of mine. And so... Um, he, he explains to Saul what's going on. He said, 
And all of a sudden, Saul is saying, something's not right here because everything that I've always believed, I'm beginning to wonder about. And not only wonder about, but he finally realizes, he said, this Messiah, this man that I thought was dead, that's who I'm speaking to right now. And he was just overwhelmed. He, he, he was blinded. And finally he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I personally think at this point, when he referred to Jesus as Lord and asked him for a, a direction, that's when the conversion um, took place. Just my opinion. Well, Jesus could have said, well, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, I want you to do the other. But he said, just simply go into town. I'm going to send somebody to you. That's one of the beauties of, one of the many beauties of the Lord is he loves sending people to do stuff. He loves using ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And so he goes and he has a, he appears to Ananias in a vision. He said, Ananias. Ananias says, yes, Lord, to hear him out. He said, I got something for you to do. I want you to go see a man named Saul. He'll be praying. He's right off State Street in Damascus. And Ananias, he, he, he says, say what? Go see who? He says, Lord. Verse 13, chapter 9. I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And I've also heard that he has the authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. And the Lord said, Ananias, I didn't ask about all that. I just want you to go, go talk to him because this man Saul is a chosen vessel of mine. And he will eventually bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. That's all in chapter 9, 15. Well, what did Ananias do? He did exactly what Jesus told him to do. He trusted and he obeyed. And in verse 17, it says, Ananias went his way and entered the house, laying his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is just so cool that he used Ananias. I believe God still uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. The you can you can he, he remarked about Saul being a vessel, but folks were all vessels. I mean, you can drink milk out of a Dixie cup. You can drink milk out of a crystal glass or a coffee cup or a jar or whatever. The essence is in the jar, not the jar itself. And so if you're spreading the gospel, God is using you as his vessel as well. I believe he even uses an old man sitting in a canoe sometime. All we have to do is trust and obey. Trust and be obedient. And that's our hymn today, Trust and Obey, number 447, if you have this particular hymnal. And it was written by John Samus, who lived from 1846 to 1919. And it's self-explanatory. It's a wonderful hymn, one of my grandma's favorites, and I've used it before, and I'm certain I'll use it again. But four verses, so <clears throat> sing along if you have your hymnal or if you remember it. And here we go. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Let us do his good will. He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, 
but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey. Last verse. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Are you trusting Jesus? Are you obeying Jesus? Is Jesus using you as a vessel? What kind of vessel are you? Um, folks, it's, a, it's nothing more pleasing and there's nothing more satisfying than doing the will of the Father and sharing his gospel. I thank you every week for um, watching this Crooked Creek Hymn of the Week. I hope it's been an encouragement today. I hope you'll share it with someone else if it has. And I hope you've had a great weekend. It's August, folks. I mean, August is a big month. We know a lot of people have birthdays. Ramon and I have an anniversary in August, and it's coming up in, in um, several weeks, and we will have been married 51 years. I think she's going to keep me, so I'm looking forward to that time. And um, But anyway, thank you for joining us today. I hope you've uh, been blessed, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week for our Crooked Creek him of the week. Take care and God bless.